dark, unobstructed views of the night sky, a requirement for astrophotography. And over the last few years, I've noticed they're becoming quite rare. Lights do serve a purpose at night. They help keep us safe. And I'd be lying if I said it hasn't forced me to look for places with darker skies. In fact, my small country town has transformed in a handful of years. So this is what has become of my dark side. A lot of townhomes, a lot of retail, and we used to shoot right up there. Man, it's crazy. And I'm sure you guys have noticed over the years, my backup site became my main site. Are the coyotes? Fortunately, I think I'll have this site for quite some time, but things can always unexpectedly change which has led me to search for other sites, but I can't easily get to those. And today I'm on a mission to find a spot close to home that's far enough to feel like an adventure, but close enough that I could get to when it gets colder. The spot I had in mind had to feel like I was going on adventure, like driving through the forest, that sense of excitement and sense of peace you get from just driving. Epic scenery emerging in the background. That random smaller town that you drive through. A river crossing here and there. And of course, random stops. I had to stop here. And you guys will see in a moment here. For those of you that remember, and it's a clear day today. So we actually might get to see it. Woo! There it is. No Polly Falls. You know what this feels like? It feels like we just came full circle. My first adventure video, I came up here, couldn't see the falls. And also I didn't know if I could do these adventures on my own. And here I am, months later, with a new car, new outlook. It's freaking awesome. So I've always wondered about this spot here that we're about to come up on and see we got a van over here. I don't know if you can see it, but I would park right there, but the trees are obstructing my view. I got another spot just through these trees over here. And it's gonna be really cool, I think. That's the thing about experimenting with new spots. You drive all this way and you don't really know if it's gonna be a good spot or not. And I think it's right over there. Not where that Mustang's pulling in, but right where that truck is over there.
Sweet. Check it out. It's just one gigantic field in a dark zone. It seems like we just traded one small town, the one that I live in, for another small town. But it is much darker here. It's a Bortle 4 compared to my Bortle 6 at home. And uh, got people pulling in here. But uh, yeah, I know it doesn't seem like much, and also it looks cloudy right now. But later tonight, I promise you, it's gonna be super clear and I can't wait to see what this place offers. Uh, I also got a lot of hiking nearby, so we might do that for a little bit when we wait for dark. But uh, yeah, this is, this is home. Here's dinner. This is the uh, first no-cook dinner I've had since I've been doing these adventures. I was in the mood for sushi, so I made stuff for sushi, and unfortunately I don't make sushi very well, uh, but uh, it should be really good. And this area is just beautiful, actually. You know, if it wasn't for the golf course that was right over here, I would think this is a wilderness area. And there's some elk just hanging out over there in this field. I thought I would see them in the morning, but they came here later in the evening. And honestly, you know, when I said, oh, maybe we should go hiking and stuff like that later, I didn't do any of that. All I did was just chill. I played games <laughs> and now I'm having dinner. So hopefully this tastes pretty good. I think it will. Let's try it. Oh, and this cutting board I, I got and this is actually a cheese cutting board, supposedly. And it came with these uh, little tools or whatnot. But uh, they were perfect to like cut like sushi. And then I can see myself cutting a bunch of avocados with it too, which I ended up doing. I put avocados in the sushi. So I'm hungry. Let's, let's see what this tastes like. And yes, I'm eating it barehanded. Okay. That's what I do. <laughs> Mmm. Chewy. <laughs> but it's pretty good. When I first started on these astrophotography adventures, I hoped that I would have moments like this where I would just witness wildlife. And here I am again, witnessing. Guys, yeah, check out Elkna now. They're like right behind me. Right behind me. <laughs> Here's my van. And here are the elk. They're right behind my van right now. And a bunch of people pulled in here because of that, but look at this. Whew. Elkna. As I continue on this phase in my life, I hope I never get used to these moments. And that I will always appreciate them for what they are.
The van is all ready to go and set up for the evening. Unfortunately, it's not time to image yet. I'm going to get to imaging at about 1030 tonight, and that's just because it's not clear enough. But I'm going to get more data on IC63 or the ghost tonight, which I'm really excited for. But it does give us time to check out a new van gadget that I got. And that's this electric tea kettle. Apparently this little guy will boil water in seven minutes. So I'm really excited about that. And I know I could probably use my induction stovetop back there, but that's just a lot of work, right? I just wanted something small that could boil water. And this was around $20, so I figured out I'd give it a try. So let's see if this guy works. All right, I know you guys are noticing something glowing in the background. This is just my storage baskets here that I just have. And I stashed tea in here somewhere. Oh, yeah. Got the chamomile. Do you hear it? I hear it boiling back there. I don't know if the mic's picking that up. It's about 151 degrees right now. And apparently you have to wait a minute. Ooh, look at that steam. Do you see that? Before you open it up. Otherwise, contents under pressure. You know, it's not great to open stuff up like that. Just like home boiled, guys. Oh my gosh. This is going to be fantastic in the morning when I have my oatmeal. But this is, this is great right now. As the night progressed, seeing actually became difficult. But I was out, and I didn't know when my next clear night would be. Fall is coming, and it's hard to get a clear night right now. All right, I'm just kind of out here experiencing things. It's gotten really foggy. And it's really weird. It's like I'm in this circle of fog. Check it out. Um, I'll shine my beam so you guys can check it out. Check that out. Wow. Fogna. <laughs> Everywhere. But I'm still getting clean data. It's crazy. And there's one street lamp over there, if you can see it, on this entire street which makes things pretty awesome. And I think it's sodium vapor, so it's one of those really old ones. But if I look straight up, it is so clear where I'm shooting right now. Well, I don't know about y'all, but it's about one o'clock in the morning and that tea has really got me drowsy. <laughs> so I think it's time for me to go to bed. I'm going to just pass out. So I'll probably see you all in the morning.
I was really surprised with what I got, considering the conditions I was shooting through. And those details in IC63 still shine through. My sulfur data wasn't too bad either, considering. Starless, I was able to resolve structure in this nebula. I know it's going to take me a few more sessions to get this to be a color photo. One thing I've learned through these adventures is, it's not about the imaging for me. It's the experience and where I spend my time. But I gotta admit, building a photo of space is a lot of fun. <laughs>